progressing to the first team. You know, he easily comes at 13, 14, 15, and to see him go all the way, um, that's what the job's all about. Nobby has first-hand experience of the system. Well, to be back at Manchester United again, it's a dream come true. I, I, I supported him as a kid, came through the system and became a player. And as I say, now my job is to work with Brian Kidd along with the 11 to 16 year olds. Brian's been doing all of Manchester and doing a great job. And my job now is to coordinate the rest of England and Ireland, Scotland or whatever, and to get the kids to come here. The scouts find them, we go out and look, bring them here. And then we coach them, Brian and myself, and hopefully that then they pass on to Eric, go through the system and become players. And now that'd be great to see, have the same thing happening to what happened to Brian and myself. Chief Scout Les Kershaw has a network of talent spotters to call upon as United look for players who'll fit into their plans. Does he get his tattles in? Would you say it'd be worth a further look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, Brian Kidd, star of United's European Cup winning side of 1968, has the chance to play a vital part in the future of the club. I'm the director of the Centre of Excellence. Also, I'm Bucket and Sponge Man for the B team. I also look after everything local, i.e. the scouts that direct and delegate the games they go to. The Centre of Excellence is licensed by the FA, which allows us to bring four age groups in, under 11s, under 12s, under 13s and under 14s. We're allowed one hour a week to work with the kiddies. Archie Knox is tremendous with the drills he does. We do a lot of versions of what the first team do. Well, a typical night, that can vary from week to week. We always use one theme, be it control and passing, crossing and finishing, heading, control. It would be nice to feel one of the lads make it, because when I was 14, there was nothing like this. And five years later, I played in the first team in the European Cup final, and who knows? Youngsters outside Greater Manchester become the responsibility of Joe Brown. I'm the youth development officer. And outside of Greater Manchester, I'm expected to recruit talented boys from 12, 13, 14 years old. Uh, we have scouts in all areas outside of Greater Manchester. Say a boy is spotted 13 and a half, then at 14 you can sign him on a schoolboy form, which means associates himself with the football club. Between 15 and 16 in his last year at school, he can play for our B team, that's our fourth team. Then, assuming he's progressed well and you offer a trainee playership, he leaves school at 16, then he becomes a junior professional. He plays in the A team, then he graduates to the reserves, and hopefully by 18 or 19, he's made the first team. Under Alex Ferguson, greater emphasis has been placed on the search for new talent and the development of young players. And although it may be several years before it plays its greatest role in the future of the club, already players are emerging who've come through schemes like YTS. Lee Martin. Mark Robbins. Russell Beardsmore. Tony Gill. David Wilson and Daniel Graham are products of the club's youth policy. When I came on my first year, you know, as a YTS, uh, there was only five of us taken on, and there's 12 taken on now with, with all your, your YTS this year. So how are you finding it all, the lads together? Oh, it's, it's OK, it creates a good atmosphere in the dressing rooms, and when we go out on the field training every day, it's, it's good, good fun. Lee Sharp became the find of the 1988-89 season after being snapped up from Torquay United, where he too had been on the YTS scheme. As for Juliano Majorana, he was discovered playing non-league football in Cambridgeshire. United today are returning to a youth policy which first brought success in the days of the Busby Babes. None greater than Bobby Charlton, discovered as a schoolboy and now a director of the club. Well, what a fantastic stadium. I remember when I first arrived here when I was 15 and there was no stands really of any note other than this side here and the players had to go around the back for the treatment in a tiny little hut and all the work was done on this particular ground. We all have training grounds everywhere now but this track round Old Trafford, this cinder track round Old Trafford was the only place that we used to do our training. To see it like this now, you know, is about right. It's about right because I think that's what some of plans were initially 
that he would have this marvellous stadium, which would be the best. He always considered that Manchester United should be the best. Well, as a director, you, you have to set the policy of the club. You have to uh, make your plans uh, for the future. You have to do your budgets. Things that I was never interested in, really, as a player. Uh, now I have to be interested in um, the well-being, the facilities. Uh, but at the end of the day, the director is to provide the service to the public. And now I'm fortunate enough to be a director of, of the greatest club, and I'm very proud. The pressures of modern football make it difficult for players to take a complete break from the game. International duty means football all the year round. But even on a rare day off, the players still enjoy each other's company. Yeah, well, spare time is quite rare during the season because uh, we've got quite a lot of games and we're always training every day. But when we do get a, a day off and if it's uh, nice, most of the boys like to have a, a round of golf. Uh, I'd uh, say that would be the main pastime, although people enjoy other things. When I moved from my hometown of Erdry, where I'd, I'd lived actually um, for 23 years, myself and my wife, it was a bit uh, difficult leaving in the first place. You always got your family and friends, but everybody at United, when I came down, were more than friendly. We were well looked after when we came down here, both by the rest of the players, who made us feel more than welcome. Uh, and the staff who went out of their way to make sure we got into a house as quick as we could. And we settled down relatively easy after that. When I first joined United, um, I think the, the very first day you're there, you're aware of how big a club it is. Um, and it's very awe-inspiring for a young boy just left school. And from my point of view, from a small village in Wales to go to a big, big club like Manchester, it was quite frightening, really. Well, my decision to come back to Manchester United um, wasn't really that difficult. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd been at um, Bayern Munich at that stage, and, uh, and I'd enjoyed my time there. Um, and I was quite prepared to stay out there for another couple of years because um, my, little, my little boy was only a few months old then, and another couple of years abroad wouldn't have made any difference to his education or whatever. So I was quite prepared to stay out for another few years. In saying that, um, if, if another English team had come in for me, um, I, I, I wouldn't have contemplated coming back. Players are in constant demand, be it from supporters who simply want an autograph or from companies looking for a celebrity. And they even find themselves on call when the club itself is launching a new line in its own boutique. So you're going to do me a good deal on that one, eh? I'll do you a good deal on that one. Right, you are. OK, well, uh, OK. OK, fine. A midweek break also gives the players a chance to get down to Old Trafford themselves. And as well as checking through their mailbox, there's some other important business to attend to. Your wages there, and your Wimbledon tickets are also attached, as well as Coventry. Oh, it's Tuesday night now. Oh, what is that, Cal? To do with, um, I think, Liverpool Everton. There's your this week's, because I haven't seen you for about a month. There's all the rest of them. Oh, four weeks wages to go in as well. That's right. Uh, no, no, right now. <laughs> no, you've had all that. You're not getting them again. No, they've all gone in. You just get what you you're getting sure? this week, yeah. You sure about that now? <laughs> 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 being a part of Manchester United means always being in the spotlight. And for Chief Executive Martin Edwards and Alex Ferguson, their working day rarely ends. They have to carry the club's banner to functions of every kind, from a dignified civic reception to the fun of a charity garden fete. And it's the same for the rest of the club's senior staff, as Old Trafford hosts yet another event. Tonight, it's a tribute dinner to Jimmy Murphy, the Welshman who picked up the club from the ashes of the Munich air disaster, and who was assistant to Sir Matt Busby for more than two decades. And United's most famous manager is here to honour his old pal. Old Trafford houses a giant restaurant complex and its function rooms are used for everything from a business seminar to a celebrity dinner. From the glamour of Miss Manchester United contest to a gathering of players from the past. An exclusive club with an all-star membership, keeping the name of Manchester United to the forefront. With the restaurants open to the public all week and the club museum closing its doors only on match days when the demand to visit would far outweigh its capacity, Old Trafford is not only the country's top stadium but a major tourist attraction. Yeah, quite interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
this is great. The museum holds many priceless treasures, from Newton Heath's first trophy to the glories of 1968. And even for those who follow in the footsteps of the famous, there's a fascination. That blue top over there got a white mark on it. Well, that belongs to Brian Kidd when uh, he was in the European Cup win in place of Dennis Law, who was injured. Yeah. And the white that you can see on it, that's the white of Wembley. It's never been washed. He doesn't want that washing at all. This, this jersey over here, right? 1958. That's it is. Yeah, that belongs to a survivor from the air crash, uh, Dennis Weiler. And that was the cup final immediately after the Munich air crash. I'm quite curious to know about the green and uh, yellow jersey here. The green and yellow jersey, yeah. those are the original colours worn by uh, Newton Heath who eventually oh. turned into Manchester United, but those are the original colours. Oh, so that was the very first jersey then? First jersey that was ever worn oh. by Manchester United. No, I knew it was green and yellow there. Uh, this is Bobby Charlton's window. The plate at the front was given to him by the Football Association when he won his 100th cap. And on there, you can see the flag of every nation that he's ever played against. Yeah. The ball at the back, that was given to him when he was made European Football of the Year award. And the three caps that you see at the back there, they are three World Cup caps, 1962, 1966 and 1970. Jules, just looking over Derek's shoulder. I think you've done this before. A visit to the club museum by young reserves Juliano Majorana and Derek Brazil means an assignment for official photographer Cliff Butler and a picture in the next edition of United Review, the match day programme co-edited with Ken Ramsden. John, look at that. That's fine. You want a tint on it? Between them, they create and design the review, which is published for every first-team home game. No problem when there's plenty of time between fixtures, but when it comes to midweek matches and cup replays, the pressure's on to meet the deadline. All the youngsters together. The reserves have a midweek game, so Alex and Archie lay out their plans together with reserve team coach Brian Whitehouse. Well, I accept that, boss. I mean, the first team's the most important uh, thing, and... Uh, uh, it'll be good for the youngsters in any case, I guess. Yeah, they'll get a bit of experience from playing in the game. Well, I know it's, um, it's been hard doing you because I've taken all your major players out of the reserves for our own needs in the first team. Yeah, I accept that. And uh, they said, well, I would have been better if we could have had one or two senior players in the side. It would have helped. They would have obviously helped us. We just have to get on with it, that's all. I mean, you think of it, Brazil... The reserve side's an important stepping stone to glory, and for established players recovering from injury, fulfills the need for competitive games to test their fitness. Monitoring the progress of the lower sides is a task allocated to one of the club's directors, whose job it is to represent United on the day of the game and to report back to his colleagues in the boardroom. We're looking for the next what, couple of seasons, maybe three seasons. Board meetings are held each month, but many of the day-to-day -day decisions are taken by Chief Executive Martin Edwards. I became in, involved with Manchester United mainly through, through my father. He became a director in 1958, in fact, the day after the, the Munich air disaster, which was about the time I started following them on a regular basis. And about the age of 24, 25, my father in, invited me to join the board in 1970, uh, when I was a director for 10 years before uh, finally being elected as, as chairman. So I have been following the club uh, fairly thoroughly for the last 30 years now. As far as our stadium is concerned, we've already got plans drawn up to develop the Stretford End, but at a considerable cost, uh, that would involve uh, putting more seats in there and obviously uh, boxes at the back and a cantilever uh, roof. So it all comes down to money and it's this fine balance again between the team and the stadium. And obviously we've got to get the team right first and make sure that we've got a, a winning team on the pitch that helps you to fill the stadium. Uh, and then we'll look to, the, to develop in the stadium as well. It's a, it's an Important matters are always discussed by the directors, and subjects on the agenda can range from stadium development to the buying of new players. We may be available, uh, depending on obviously the, the type of negotiations that you can go into with uh, some of the clubs, but you know how difficult that can be, i.e. the present market. And when Manchester United come for a player, there's always a bit on top, but Hopefully that, and I think it's important, I think we all realise that, that we have a team that can challenge. I think the support want the best players, and I think we've always considered that. A vital step in the rebuilding programme came in the summer of 1989, when £2 million was spent on England midfield star Neil Webb and Michael Phelan, the Norwich City captain. At the end of the day, I chose Manchester United simply because I wanted to play here. 